Welcome back to video number two with my Chinese 144 Hertz gaming laptop with the Nvidia GTX 1650. Now this laptop cost me 644 US dollars. That's the lowest it was selling for. Right now I think it's about 700 US. It has one big weakness. So it's really bottleneck is the CPU. It has an Intel Pentium Gold a G5420, now that's a 9th gen CPU, but the great thing about this particular laptop, and something we don't see anymore really, is it has an upgradable CPU, and in fact is a desktop socket it's got on there. It's the LGA1151 that you'll see in lots of desktop motherboards, of course, with Intel. So what I decided to get, I'm taking a bit of a risk here, I don't even know if it's gonna work, but we'll find out in this video, of course, is a Core i5-9400. Now this model has the CPU, six cores. So we're gonna go from two cores to six cores. Will the power supply handle it? Will we run into thermal throttling, power limit throttling? Will it overheat? Will it even post? Will it even boot? I don't know, but the supplier said to me that yes, it will take ninth gen CPUs and eighth gen ones. So let's find out in this video. Hopefully this is gonna have a great outcome. I'm really looking forward to this. So if you didn't see that first video again, I did remove the rear cover and showed the internals. I'll quickly and briefly show it right here. So you've got six screws on the inner cover, which I have already removed. So they're just all around here. And this simply just pries up. There's a little point right here we can get your finger in, and then you just pull it straight up, unclip around the edges to here, and that comes off. And you get really good access to all your upgradable components. So that is the wireless card that we can upgrade to an Intel Gigabit one. I highly recommend the Intel Wireless AC9260 with Bluetooth 5, that's a very fast card. You can add another PCIe SSD or SATA 3 one right here, 2280 in size. There are the two RAM slots you can see right here. But what we're gonna be focusing on, of course, in this video is the CPU here. So here's the slot, so the LGA, the 1151. And what I've done is already undone all the screws right here, so they have been removed. Now I thought this might have been soldered on, and because it's under the plastic here, I thought, oh, I'm gonna to have to remove this outer plastic, but it turns out that I could just see now a thermal pad is right here connecting and transferring some of the heat from the GPU also to the CPU. So we've got two copper thermal transfer heat pipes here. They are very uh, large ones, as you can see, and the larger fan is our CPU fan too here. So there's two screws, done both, undone both of those right here and removed them. So in theory, hopefully, if I'm not forgetting about a screw or there's one hidden, this should now lift up. So we've got the thermal pads here, and this, hopefully, I can pull, okay, there we go, that right out, and you can see the thermal paste that they have used uh, does seem to be pretty good, and they've done a good job there too with pasting that, and they haven't gone overboard as well. Okay, so I've just quickly given this a wipe. I've got rid of all the thermal paste that's on there because I just don't want to get it all over my hands. Otherwise, it'll end up all over the plastic and everywhere. So if you work on desktop PCs, this is all going to be pretty much straightforward to you. You've got this clip right here. You could say like a spring. This is applying the pressure here, keeping the CPU in place. So you just simply need to pull this out from one side and then that goes, it should just pull up and there we go we now have access to that CPU. So you can see there's a tiny little arrow here that aligns with the motherboard. Of course, that's what we're gonna have to look at when we install the new CPU, the Core i5. So this we can simply take out quite easily. Uh, make sure you're not t touching your cat, your dog, or anything like that. Static electricity will kill these components that are around here. So make sure you earth yourself as well if you can. So here we have the new CPU. So it's the Core i5-9400 as mentioned. So I'm just gonna take it out of this and make sure that I align that little arrow in that corner and slot that in place. So you can't actually put this in the wrong way. So there we go. That is fine, it's in place. And you simply need to just repeat this process here of getting that, make sure that is underneath that screw there and then push this right down. And then we have that CPU installed in place. This is very easy to do. Now we're gonna put some thermal paste on. Okay, so now I'm just cleaning up now the old thermal paste. So I've just put some Arctic Clean on here. You can use various other different cleaning products. And that's just removed all the residues left from the old paste there behind. So when we put the new paste on, that cryonaut 
Now to apply the thermal paste. So use whatever method that works for you. I normally just put it on there and spread it out evenly and that has always worked for me. I've been doing this for years. I've been building PCs for years. But everyone is an expert when it comes to this. I mean, just look at the comments. Just read some of the comments right now. But with the Cryonaut, the From Thermal Grizzly, they do recommend that you spread it out. So I'm just going to put a little bit in the middle. So straight away people are going to say you're not using enough, you're using too much. So I think that much to start with. I'll spread that out and see how I go. Now I think that's going to be enough. So this is the little spreader that they give you. So you're supposed to just spread it out evenly. And it doesn't actually spread as good as I'd hoped. So I'm actually going to need a lot more thermal paste as you can see. This is not looking pretty. And I can see people in the comments screaming already. You're doing it wrong. In fact, it's most of it's getting stuck on this. So I'm definitely going to need a little bit more thermal paste. Okay, so I'll put about half a tube on there, which is probably way too much, but a little bit of excess that'll just spill out to the sides anyway won't matter, and I'd rather put on more than not enough. I also applied a little bit on the top here thinly using the spreader. It doesn't spread out quite as good as I would want, but as mentioned, use your own method. If you want to just put a pea-sized dollop in the middle, then do that. So time to fit the cooler back. So make sure you've got the cable not trapped underneath the fan or anything silly like that. So you want to slot this in first. The cooler, the fan. Okay, and then just drop this down in place right here. So we've got the screws. They are numbered which ones you need to screw in first. And you do it in that order. So that is the heatsink and the copper pipes and the fan all back in place. Everything's screwed back. Uh, the repaste on there went well, I think. I can't see huge amounts oozing out the side or anything. In fact, I can't see anything coming out the sides of it. Just taking a peek, I think. Uh, yeah, I might have gone overboard a little bit with the paste, but it's going to have good coverage on the top of that. So now we're going to test and see if it's going to boot. That's not my biggest concern. My biggest concern is will this cooler and the two large copper transfer pipes here be enough to cool a desktop CPU in a laptop? Let's find out. Okay, let's do this. I must admit I'm nervous. I don't want to have to go back in there and buy another CPU like a Core i3 and put in this. Otherwise, this video is going to be a bit of a disaster. So, powering on. Oh, that's a good sign. Logos come up. Whoa. You're right. Okay, it's working. All right, so the fan is on quite a bit. You can hear it. The fan is working harder than it did with just the two cores before. As expected, we've got four additional cores here. But look at the temperatures. Seems very good. It's stabilizing around the mid sort of late 60s, which is good. I think the highest it's got up to is 69 degrees, which I think is excellent. And you can see it's holding across all six cores 3.79 gigahertz, so 3.8, and that is really good. There is no thermal throttling or anything like that that has been triggered or even power limit throttling, but I'm going to have to stress, of course, both the GPU and CPU, which I will do next. Okay, so there's a massive improvement here. The fan noise is as it was before. It gets a little loud gaming. No changes there, but look at this performance increase. So that's the old score, and this is the new score, Geekbench 4. Have a look at that. Huge change. Absolutely massive. Of course, going from the two cores, the four threads, to now six cores is a massive step up there. And the, the turbo as well is quite a bit higher at the 1.4. And we take a look now at Fire Strike. So that's the original score there. The 7,186 is now, graphics scores 9,186 is now 10,000 graphics score because I overclocked the GPU a little bit as well. But take a look at that physics score, which is over double. It's now 12,286 and giving us a score there of close to 9,000, which is really, really good considering what this originally was getting. So that is super quick. And for those interested, Time Spy, a score of almost 3,900. Graphics score is 3,726. CPU score is 5,222. Really solid score. So, thermals and power limit throttling. This is over the last hour or so that I've been gaming, pushing it hard. Uh, you can see that no power limit throttling, no thermal throttling, so it's handling it really well. Maximum temperatures, according to HW Info, which I have been running, as I always do in my reviews, is 76. It's a core max. Really, really good. I do believe that you could probably get away with putting an i7 
9700 in this, not the K version, you want the 65 watt one. And then the GPU's maximum, if I scroll right down, where is it? GPU is actually being very cool as well. 64 degrees you can see there. So very good temperatures. Those NVIDIA GPUs tend to run quite cool, so no problems with that. That's why I think there is headroom, just a little bit, for an even faster CPU in this, which would be crazy. Now there's also, as you'd expect, a massive, huge difference in the Cinebench R15 score. So the original CPU that it came with, 351 CB, nothing amazing, rather low, and now it is close to 1000 as you can see here, posting 931 CB. So a really good improvement there. I'm really happy with the results. Now I'm taking a look here at Witcher 3 again. If you saw the first video, I ran into the same exact area, same settings, so 1080p medium settings. It dipped down to 54 frames per second. The lowest it just got then was 81. Now I have overclocked the GPU a little bit here. So I've got about 120 on the core clock and the RAM I have boosted up 950 megahertz. So that also is making a big difference. So this is now the maximum performance that we can squeeze out of the GTX 1650 in its current state, of course, with the new six core CPU has made a huge improvement here to gaming, just making that frame rate just so much more stable, dipping down only really about 10 frames per second and instead of dipping down about 30 as it did before because it would go down to 54 and it was averaging around about 80. So I say on average we're gaining probably about 10 frames per second more here from both that overclock and the new CPU. So GTA 5, 1080p, absolute maximum settings that I have set here. If you take a look at the graphics, um, I have all the population density, variety, scaling distance, very high, high. Uh, reflection, actually this is, could be on right here. It's absolute max kind of settings. And you'll see that it's running really quite well considering the GPU. We're getting around 50 frames per second average. And of course the graphics does look very good. There's a little bit of screen tearing here, there. I probably have to turn on VSync, but these kind of games aren't going to be able to take advantage of that 144 hertz. You're going to have to play older titles like Counter-Strike Global Offensive for that. Let's take a look at how it performs. So this is Counter-Strike on the maximum settings. And it's running, you can see an average of about, what, 160 frames per second. It's over the 144 refresh rate. So this game just looks super smooth and is running really well. However, let's see what happens when I start the new round, if it's going to actually dip below 144. Well, so far it hasn't, so look, I mean, it's just handling this perfectly now with that upgraded CPU. So if I set the VSync on, that'll be ideal. Keep it at the solid 144 hertz matching the refresh rate. All right, guys, the results speak for themselves, don't they? It worked out. I did not expect to have this outcome. I didn't expect me to be sitting here with a happy face, smiling. I thought it would probably be the end result being, hey, guys, I had to put the Pentium Gold CPU back in there because it didn't post, it didn't boot, or it didn't handle it, it just got too hot, um, something ran into problems. Now, I've done a lot of stress testing on it so far. I will continue if I do run into any problems. I will pin a comment at the top of this video if it does just completely die on me. I don't expect it because the manufacturer said that yes, it can handle the 9th gen CPUs. It does have the H700, uh, sorry, 370 chipset in here and you can use 8th gen chips too apparently in this. So if you're looking at the used market and you want to get a cheap upgrade, find a used Core i5, an 8th gen one, throw that in here, and then you can really open up the performance. So it has increased the gaming performance as you saw dramatically. The CPU performance has now more than doubled. There's no power limit throttling, there's no thermal throttling. Uh, the power supply is fine. The thermals, the fan noise, everything is really good. It's not getting any hotter than it did before with the dual core. So the thermal pace, Grizzlies, uh, Cronaut works really well. Okay, maybe my thermal pace job, my application method, maybe not the greatest. You probably don't agree with me, but hey, again, the results, they do speak for themselves. Their thermals did not go over. The CPU doesn't go over. 76 degrees, which is really great. So if you haven't seen the first video of the 644 US 144 Hertz screen gaming laptop, 
then make sure you check that out. It's right up here. If you are new to the channel here and you like this content, then please do subscribe for more up and coming videos from me. And of course, if you like the video, please give it a like. And I do hope to see you back in the channel soon. Bye for now.